Hi there, Delroy from Eastway Electrical here. Just to let you know that we're having a live event at Cineworld in Canary Wharf on November the 14th, 6 till 9. I have a feature length episode over an hour long. Also, a biography of how I got into the trade and the Q&A after. It's in conjunction with um, Schneider Electrics. Tickets are out now, so if you can get one, it'd be nice to meet you. Thank you. Hi there, Delroy and Sparky. I'm off to a job stuck in a bit of traffic here. This job is this guy, um, he wants some sockets in his basement. We agreed everything, and I thought, let me just pop around there and have a look at it so I get my head around what he's doing so it'd be more simple when I get there. I know what to expect. So I went and had a look. I broke the guy's lampshade. It's funny, but not so funny. Like I said, since I've been working in this trade for so long, I've never damaged anything in anyone's house, ever. Where they got the cupboard for the fuse board up in by the front door, and they got this light there, and there's a glass lampshade on it. So I was trying to look at the fuse board, which opened the door, it opens like that. They've tied a string to the door, so because it hits the light. So I'm thinking, why is this door so stiff? So I'm pulling it and it bangs against the lamp. The thing just shattered. I was so shocked. Oh God, so I said, I had to apologize to him, obviously. What can I do? I asked him how much he is, how much it is. He hasn't told me how much it is yet. So when I go back, that's the first thing I want to know. And I want to know how much that lampshade is. Anyway, I'm going to go, I'm going back there now to do the job. And I'm a bit late and stuck in traffic as well. Anyway, when I get there, hopefully it works out good. Right, so there you are. It's going up. This this is going up to a socket, yeah. Um, yes. Yes, that socket, right yeah. It, wasn't it? And yeah. if this cable, this one here, if if this is it, if we can find it and that's it, yeah. What I suggest is that we cut it because I was thinking I can, and then pull, you can just take a junction off it. pull another one up, but I think I'd cause that yeah. be aggravation. Yeah, yeah. So I think if we can find it, and that's definitely it, we cut it and then put a socket here and then with your other two rather than just put a, a useless joint okay give you an extra socket there oh, right. yeah what, yeah just, i mean take your recommendation yeah don't really need this trunk in but um just to keep it in place i don't want the cable floating and i can't tack it to the brick work properly so There's a bit of board covering it here, so I, I took the board out. Right, that's all good. Yeah, if I drop it down there, then just run a bit of trunking across and down to it, yeah. That's how it was. It's all good. So what I've decided to do, come across there with a bit of trunk in. There's something here stopping me. Else I would put it in some flexi duck and just push it behind it. But this is in the way. So I think what I'll do, I'll run that across there. Yeah, that should do it. Cool. This, this plastic is not very good. It's really soft like sort of there's some damp in it or something. So he wants a socket on this wall for maybe a freezer. I think about here would be fine. Yeah, probably here would be fine, but I'll find out from him, see what he says. Nails. 
Yeah, that's not good. That's not holding. It's just going right through it. Okay. Yep, that's all nice and tight. The other one I think he wants about here. That's where the lampshade was there. Look. That it. That's the string that was tied onto it. That's a circuit I'm gonna cut. So there you go. I cut the cable. There you go. Comes down to here. The other one goes to here. Look. And then we chunk into all the up. Right, so that's it, that's the ring. So what I've done, I took one from this point all the way over to there, right, by the stairs, and then I brought one back here. So one from that leg comes here, and the other one goes over to there. So it's from there, over to there, from there, back to here, that one there, that one over to there, that's your ring. So all right, there you are, that's a completed job. Look it there. You know what, I haven't completed, I've got to put a bend on here. <laughs> okay, that's all done anyway. Just packing up to go. Well, that worked out okay. On the day when I broke <laughs> broke his um, lamp, his shade, he was quite he was quite nice about it. He said, don't worry, mate, we've got another one. And then when I came back, I said, I said to him, how much is it? He goes, don't worry, it's okay. We've got another one, don't worry about it. So at the end of the job, I knocked off something off the price, you know. He was very, very nice bloke actually. Plus I'm coming back tomorrow to um, his microwave keeps tripping the RCBO. Anytime he turns it off, I think, or it turns it on or something, it trips. So I'm gonna look into that, see if I can sort that out for him. Okay, thanks for watching, see you next time. Hi there, Daryl the Spark here again. I'm back on that job that I was doing yesterday where I put the sockets in the um, cellar. His um, oven keeps tripping one of the RCBOs, which is Good that it's RCBOs because you know directly which circuit is so you can check the circuit out. But I also wanted to put a pat test on the oven. I've got this thing here, earth leakage thing. Yeah. The geezer showed me how to use this. You make up a lead and you have the earth sticking out. You plug it in and then you plug the item you're testing into that plug. And you put this around the earth and it's supposed to give you a reading to tell you if if there's any leakage to earth or how much how much leakage there is to earth but i can't find my lead and i can't even remember how to use it i've only used it about once or twice quite a few years ago so instead i brought this along <laughs> this tester i've had this since i think about 2000 <laughs> maybe late 90s actually I used it a few years ago. I think there's a video of me using this, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a test on the circuit and then try and use this. But hopefully I can figure it out. So <laughs> come along and see. All right, cool. That's the culprit there. There's the oven. I think it's one of these bits here. Yeah, that's it. Yep, that's it, it's tripped. Okay, let's see if we can see what's going on. Plug seems like it's up the top somewhere. 
Now that's not a clever way of doing it, is it? Can't really work on it, can't take it out so you can work it out. So I'm gonna have to set my steps up here somehow. Get up there and see if I can deal with it. Yeah, that could be plugged in. Right, okay, so that's cool. I wonder if I pull it out, whether it's gonna give me aggravation to get it back in. Because look, um, no, what I'll do, because what I want to do, I'm going to pull it out, put it on the plug top, and try it in another circuit. I'll put a test on this circuit, but I've got a feeling there's nothing wrong. But you never know, I can't be too... Um, yeah, I'll have to put a test. Just do a general test on it, see what, see what comes up. You can't take anything for granted. I doubt if it's the circuit. Right. Let's see what we get. Right, okay, let's face to earth. No, face, face to neutral, sorry. On 200, let's try it on. Okay, cool. Yeah, neutral to earth, face to earth. Yeah, it's all coming up, testing up okay in that sense. So I've got it all connected back. Switch on, go to the other end. See what happens there. Just gonna do a ZS. Mmm. Mmm, what's that mean? Oh, oh maybe it's tripped. It's tripping. So I wonder if it's the RCBO. Because all I'm doing is a ZS test and it's just tripping. Let's try again. Make sure the connection's tight. Uh, something's wrong. No, it doesn't seem like it's the other one. What I've done, I disconnected it from there, put a yeah. plug on it, plugged it in your socket in there. It would trip by now, wouldn't it? Um, it only seems to trip when you turn it off and on. Right. The first thing this morning, I yeah. turned it on and it tripped. Yeah, second, if it will go very quickly. Yeah. So it seems to me, I've done a test on this thing, on the circuit. Yeah. What I want to do now is change the RCBO. First of all, I'm going to put a socket on there, just temporary, so I can plug in. Because what I'm doing it, I'm doing it with my two leads. And sometimes if you don't get proper connection, I'm sure I am getting proper connection. Yeah. I think it's something wrong with the RCBO. So I'm going to do it. So it looks like that's fine. That's good news. You yeah. know what you could do? You could change that socket there to a double mm. socket behind there. Yeah. And somehow maybe drill a hole in the in that side so you can push the thing in and, mm. and fix it in there if you wanted to what's going to be best long term uh long term what i would do i would get a cable from there down to here right down to there and put a socket there and you can just plug it in mm. if you need to take it out you, know, you just unplug it and pull it out mm. you don't need to put it in there mm. and plus either extend the cable and and reconnect it in there if you want mm. so you haven't got that stretch when you pull it out mm. or come down to a point behind where you can plug it in um the quickest thing is to extend it let's i mean for today let's extend it and see yeah. if you can find well the thoughts. thing is providing we can solve the fault on that yeah. circuit okay. okay then you get back to what you're doing right, I'll get on with it. Look, give it a shout if you need anything yeah no worries mate thanks Right, so I've changed, I've put a socket on there temporary just to make sure that my connections are firm. So I'm going to switch it on now and see if it still trips. That test's fine. So maybe, maybe when I was um, trying to use my probes, I weren't connecting properly. But still tells me something's wrong because the oven works fine in this other circuit. But let me do the RCD check, see what happens. So that's all good, I think. But, um, well, the thing is, you see, could be this, it could be the switch, could be something wrong with that. But it seems fine now that I've got a plug on it. No problem, no issue. You know, with this ramp test, you're supposed to press it and it's supposed to trip at a certain point. Let's see what happens. 19 milliamps. That's where it's tripping. But I've got a feeling that the circuit's fine. So I've got it plugged in up there. It's come on. Go on, switch it on, let's see what happens. Right, because look, look what I've done up there. 
Oh, great. Okay, I've got yeah, a plug. Thank you. Yeah. Right, and I think. Um, you think it's a little isolated? I think it's that. Yeah, right. That's okay. the problem. So it's, there's nothing on the board? Switch it on and off and see what happens. It would trip by now, wouldn't it? As it's gone. It's gone? Yeah. Ah. Uh, oh, but the thing is, on this circuit, it doesn't trip, no matter how you switch it. Oh, on, you're on the different plug Yeah, so I put it on the different plug. Right. So I thought it was that switch. Maybe it's a combination, I don't know. What I should do, I think, maybe get another one of those switches up there. But let me find out first whether that's correct, yeah? yeah. Okay. Right, so I've got a few options. Well, I've got a new switch. So what the situation is, this flex is 1.5, yeah? And that's a 32 amp fuse. So this should really be on a plug. You plug it in. Because I bought a socket with a plug. I bought one of these, but the one with a plug, so you could choice. You could have a choice. But he, he just wants the quickest thing. So the quickest thing is just join it, put a new switch up there, connect it in, that, um, change the... I've got a new miniature RCBO because from what I found out, the trip time, when you do that ramp chest, it's supposed to be between 15 and 30 milliamps and that's tripping at 19 and apparently that's at the lower range so it could be the RCBO so that's why I'm going to change the RCBO right I'm going to change the RCBO this one was a 40 amp I mean it's the same thing that I've said before this is just one five flex 40, 40 amp don't protect that so I've bought a 16 amp that I'm going to put in. If they get a more powerful cooker, they'll have to change it. I'll let him know that. The buzz bar is fixed. That's great. Fantastic, man. All right, let me just connect this. So there, I've fitted a new switch, MK switch. I've got this joint here to join it, so you can pull it apart. I've put in a new MCB, 16 amp, because that cable is only 1.5 coming from the cooker, so it's got to protect it. There's a 40 amp there. Got it switched on, power's on, let's see what happens. Still on. You try it, see what you usually do, see if it's... Well, what I've done, I changed the RCBO, yeah. I changed the switch, yeah. which I think... Ah, it's gone. It's gone? Yeah. Let's leave it. It's got to be this. Yeah. Okay, well that's good to know. But the thing is, RCBO mm. was too big. Mm. It's 40 amps, oh, right. and this here is only rated at 16 amps. Oh, right, okay. So I changed it to 16 amps yeah, so that it protects that. Yeah. But I dropped the cover for this behind yeah, here. Said it's right. I'll buy another one and come back and put the cover on that when Honestly, you come back. Don't worry, don't, don't worry about no, no, you can't leave cable like that. Right, so I've turned the oven on. Now I'm going to go to the fuse board with this and see what um, reading I get. So there I've got it. So that's 0.17. So there's nothing wrong with the circuit. Keeps fluctuating like that. <laughs> the oven's plugged in. So if there's something wrong with the oven, it should have gone up, shouldn't it? Okay. Right, so I had the oven plugged in, but um tells me nothing's wrong with the circuit. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put the plug on the end of here that I made up. I'm gonna plug this in and put a test and see what happens. So as you can see and here I've got it on running and there it is. No point no one milliamp. That's what it's giving me there. So it's telling me there's not a problem. Let's turn that off. Right, this is foxing me. I've done all the tests that I can. Insulation resistance test on the circuit, that's all fine. Everything, the circuit is fine. Now I'm doing the test on the actual machine and that's telling me this fine. So what's tripping it? So now I've got it in my pat tester, as you can see, and I've attached the earth, the earth lead to the network, plugged it into the tester. It's in the on position and look, look what, look what happens here. It's 0.04, so that's low. If it was good, it would say high. So that's telling me there's a fault, there's an earth fault. So I'm gonna start off again. It's plug, plugged in and turned on, the earth bond, okay? If the earth bonding's good, it'll say high, because it's greater than two mega ohms or whatever, okay? But what I'm getting is, here we go, go. Right, 
0.04. So that's not good. Let's go to the soft test. I think this is for office equipment or something, but anyway, let's go. Right, 0.4, okay. Skip the business equipment. This is just testing the fuse. That is okay, I think. Pass, that's fine. This is also checking that there's no broken neutral or anything like that. So this insulation resistance, but yeah, it's high anyway. So that means it's good. <laughs> there you go. High greater than 20 mega ohms, yeah? That means the insulation resistance good. The only problem is the earth. This was connected to the body. If it's a good earth, if it's no problem, it should be high. Yeah, that's a problem. But my problem with this is, there's a socket behind there. When I plugged it in there and the guy switched it as much as he liked, it wouldn't trip. But when you put it into that circuit, it tripped. But there's nothing wrong with the circuit. Well, I've done the full test on the circuit and I also done it with my um, earth leakage. There's nothing wrong with the circuit. It's got to be this, there's something wrong with this. Which is usually the case. It is usually the equipment, but you have to be sure. You don't want to walk away from a job and then you find out something in the circuit that was causing the problem. Me personally, I go for the full test. Well, that's the end of that job. What threw me was the fact that, because it's all RCBOs, and the fact that it would work in that other circuit without tripping, no matter what you've done, that threw me. But I suppose if he'd used it in that circuit continuously, it would eventually trip because it, it was a fault on the, um, on the appliance. It's usually the appliance that's causing the problem. So I never rush these things. I make sure I do a thorough test, test the circuit, test everything. And plus he had a 40 amp rcbo in there the cable is only six mil anyway so you should most it should be 32 amp anyway i've got fitted a lower mcb and a gave me a new cooker switch it's better than the one that was there the circuit's fine it's definitely the oven that's causing the problem so he says he's going to get someone to look at it anyway thanks for watching see you again